Today, I'm going to show you how to automate these roller blinds. That way, in the morning, they automatically go up, and at night, they automatically go down. These roller shades are massive. They're about 35 inches across, and they're 63 inches high. I've been looking for a solution to this first world problem, but I could not find the answer. It was very frustrating because all the pieces are there, but nobody seems to make it or nobody seems to share the secret sauce. If you want to buy the automatic shades from the store, then it's about $200 being the cheapest. Doing something like that for this bay window is just too much for my budget right now. And I would imagine it's our budget for a lot of people, not just myself. The only solution was to retrofitting these existing roller shades to be automatic. By doing so, the cost per shade is now down to $30 or even lesser. From going down all the way to the bottom to all the way to the top, which is about 60 inches, it will take about 3 minutes. I know that sounds like a lot, but we rarely need the roller shade to go down instantly. And now that they're automatic, we just notice that the windows are open in the morning and close at night. This first roller shade on the right hand side is actually a prototype. That's why you're seeing a bunch of wires. But it will be even cleaner in the second version that you saw earlier on the left hand side. This whole project is based on this author's project, Motor on a Roller Blind, on Thingiverse. Here you can see that it uses a small motor with gears, and this connects to the, uh, the tube. Unfortunately, this setup does not work for me because my window is massive. I tried to set up and the gears would skip and skip, and the motor itself could not lift the roller shade when it was down at the lowest position. It doesn't have enough torque to lift the whole thing. On the way down, it doesn't have enough torque to hold the roller shade in place, so it will free slide down all over the place. Thankfully, the next solution is available at principles.com. But the problem for me was that the author mounted this towards the ceiling and a bunch of holes onto the side of the window. For my setup in the house, I could not do that. The only place I can mount this whole thing is towards the window, looking outside. This is a better angle. You can see there are screws mounted towards the ceiling and screws mounted towards the side. Whereas mine cannot do that. Mine is towards this ledge facing the outside. If your setup is like this author's setup, then it should work fine. Let's take a closer look at my setup so you can see what I'm talking about. Here you can see that I kept the same setup as before. I kept the metal pieces because the metal is much, much stronger than any 3D prints that I know. So for us, the only thing that we're printing is this gear, this motor mount to mount it onto the window frame, and a little adapter for the gear, which you'll see later on. We only need three things to 3D prints, and that's the NEMA 17 motor mount, a little small washer, the gear adapter that goes into the tube, open the STL files in the link below, and print it in this exact same orientation I have it. Alright, now is the time to set up all the components. Here is the NEMA 17 stepper motor. It comes in a very long wire, so cut it down to size, and then insert the DuPont connectors in. I'm using DuPont connector so I can easily slide the motor out or in as needed in the future. In this video, we might as well go over how to install DuPont connectors. When you get the kit, you get these male connectors as well as female connectors. For the motor, we're using male connectors. For the male connectors, at the very end, you'll see there's two metal pieces sticking outward. Bend them so it forms a U shape. It goes down, over, and back up again. Bend it into a perfect U shape because in the package they come out as a V shape. You can use your nails or a little plier to bend it into shape. Once that's done, insert the connector into this slot right here. Place it into the crimp with the flat side facing upward. Next up, insert the wire with all of the metal parts into this side and a little of the wire covering into this part right here. Finally, crimp it by squeezing the two handles. This is the result that you should have once you are done with the four wires. Next up, just slide the mail into this plastic casing, and this is what you should end up with. If you did it correctly, when you slide the mail piece in, you should hear a click. You know it's in position because now when you try to pull the wire out, the wire does not come out of this plastic case. Next up, we're going to assemble the roller adapter. So go ahead and try to squeeze this bearing in to this 
hole right here. The way I did it was that I put the bearing all the way in the bottom. I put the 3D prints on top and then I used this leveler to slam the 3D prints in and over on top of the bearing underneath. For the next 3D print, we're going to slide the uh, motor into position and then tighten it down with M3 bolts. From here to here, it's about one centimeter. Don't try to tighten the bolt all the way down or else you just crack the plastic piece instantly. You can see this is how I position the wire accordingly. Next up, we're going to install this pulley onto the uh, motor. So go ahead and slide it into position and then tighten it down with the included Allen wrench. There's two of them to tighten down, one here and the other one on this side. All right, now we need to remove this metal piece from the roller shade. This one was extremely tough for me and I finally found a secret to pulling it out easily. Yep, this is the ply that you need to grab it out. You don't even have to use a lot of force. All you have to do is squeeze on this metal piece, squeeze, 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 and then you can finally just pull it out and it will come out easily. Don't try to use force. If you try to use force, you might mess up your vinyl um, roller shade. Once the metal piece is out, go ahead and squeeze the uh, 3D prints here into position. You can see that my 3D printer messed up a little bit because there's layer shifting, but it's alright because it's all the way at the edge and the belt doesn't touch it, so that's alright. In this picture, you can see how it's mounted onto my window frame. I kept the original metal piece. Here's the M4 bolt going through the 3D printed washer. And then there's a washer here, the metal mount, and on the other side, another M4 washer and nut to hold everything into position. Don't mount the NEMA 17 motor into place yet. You have to mount the tube into this holder right here. Next, insert the pulley in along with the belt. Position the NEMA 17 mount as tight with the belt as you can. Mark the mounting holes, remove the tube, and then screw the motor mounts into position. Here's a screenshot of the video that you saw earlier. Make sure that the belt is straight. Here you can see that the belt is not straight. I messed up. I totally messed up there. The gear has to be straight, the belt has to be straight with the gear, and this belt has to be tight. We're done retrofitting the roller shape with the necessary hardware. Now we're going to look at the schematic of the electronics. This is the ESP32 board. Here's the TMC2208 driver. You'll need a 12 volt DC input. Here's our NEMA 17 motor. We're also going to need a buck converter to convert the 12 volt DC down to 5V DC to feed this ESP32 board. Here's a little capacitor, 100 microfarad to be specific. Let's do an overview real quick. You need a capacitor right here that's in parallel with the 12V uh, DC input. Once in a while, the NEMA 17 requires a lot of current and that capacitor will come in play. One thing I noticed is that ESP32 boards are not standard. So make sure that the pins are the same for your ESP32 board. All we need is V in and ground to feed this ESP32 board with power. We'll need the enable, the step, and the direction from the driver going into the board. VIO and ground from the driver into ground and 3 volt of the ESP32 board. Here you can see the 12 volt DC coming in. That's the capacitor. Here's the buck converter to convert the 12 volt into 5 volt to feed this ESP32 board. That's the driver. My ESP32 board does not come with an antenna, so I had to buy an external antenna. This antenna is super powerful. Here's the thin cord that you saw earlier, and that goes to the motor that you saw earlier. They'll connect via the DuPont connections that we made. This thin wire is very easy to conceal. If you look closely, you'll see that it's one of those fancy flat Ethernet cable. There's eight wires within that cord, and I paired them up because we only need four wires to feed into the motor. In this picture, you can see the wire dangling about. It doesn't really look that bad. It actually looks kind of like a decor. If you're really anal about it, you can always hot glue it to the frame of the window and nobody will notice. We're done with the electronics and now let's look at the code. I had a lot of issue with the code because my setup was totally different, but I was very happy that the author had the time and patience to help me along. All you have to do is just copy the code and it'll work assuming that you have the same setup as mine which is the NEMA 17 motor, the ASP32 board, and the driver, the TMC2208 driver. The only thing that you have to change is your home SSID and the password for that SSID. Go to line 62 and 63 as needed. If you know what you're doing, go ahead and change the API and OTA as well. You have the code, so let's go ahead and flash it onto the ESP32 board. Go to ESP home, 
click on new device click on continue name it whatever you want click on next choose your board we're using the sp32 board this one click on skip click on edit paste the code in be sure to change the wi-fi ssid and password for it click on install manual download modern format it'll take about eight minutes once it's done it's going to give you a bin file the bin file should be in your download folder i'm going to click on stop because i don't need it but you definitely do you'll notice that i'm using firefox to install the bin file onto the ASP32 board, you actually need Edge. Yeah, unfortunately you need Edge. Now that we're in Edge, go ahead and open this website up. Click on Connect. Be sure that your ASP32 board is connected to your USB of the computer that you're using right now. I'm using my desktop, so I have mine connected already, and I'm going to hit Connect. If the ESP32 board is recognized, it should look like this something something with UART on it. Click on connect. Click on install. Choose file. Choose the bin file that you got earlier. Click on open and click on install. It takes forever, maybe like 10 minutes to install this bin file. Once it's done, go ahead and unplug it from the USB port of your computer. Plug the 12 volt DC into your breadboard and power up the whole setup. Once it's up and running and on your network, you should see something here with the name of the device that you gave it. I don't have anything available at the moment, but let's just do an example. Click on the configure of your device. It'll ask for a password. The password will be the OTA password that you saw earlier, which is 269 something something. And then click on connect. Once it's added successfully in your ESP home, you'll see it in the list. Let's click on it. If you use my example, it will appear just like this. Click on one device. I find it really easy to configure using the HA app on my mobile device. So go ahead and navigate to integrations and go into your uh, Roller 1 that you saw earlier before. Tap on the setup switch to turn it on. Now setup mode is in progress. Press this button right here that says press. And you'll see the roller shade start going down. As soon as it hits the bottom of where you want it to be, press on this button once more, and then you'll see the roller shade going up again. When it hits the top or whatever you want the top to be, press this button one more time, and you're done with the setup. The setup switch should automatically go back into the uh, off position. Your setup is now totally done. You are totally done with your first automatic retrofitted roller shade. This setup took me forever just to get it done and I'm so happy I'm able to share with you in this video. One other thing I noticed is this setup is not very durable, especially the 3D printed part. I'm working on revisions now to make sure that your roller shade don't come crashing in in the middle of the night when you're sleeping. If you look closely at my 3D printed part, you'll see that there's some weak connections there. I'm going to reinforce it with metal rods right in the middle to reinforce the whole setup. That part will come at a later video. If you have better ideas, please feel free to share with us in this video. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel and thanks for watching.